this point does it make? Now, David Knight's going to break down more excerpts of Cy Hirsch's uh, book here in just a moment, right here in the studio. But we wanted to really focus in on this tonight because it's a big deal. This is going on behind the scenes, and it gives me a lot of faith that there are still a lot of good people in our government and in, in our system, but they need us, we the people, to stand up and support what they're doing as well. Because if the fact that criminals have hijacked our government are funding terrorists and letting them into our country to destabilize us ever gets out of the general public, it could cripple the globalists forever. We are at a key point now, ladies and gentlemen, and this is not a coup because the globalists have already taken over. They're illegitimate. The military is engaged in a stealth, very moderate counter coup against what the establishment's doing, and it is a big, big deal. And truth is stranger than fiction. I never imagined uh, that we'd see resistance to this tyranny coming from these quarters, but it is happening. Alex Jones, signing off for InfoWars.com. Back to David Knight. Thanks, Alex. And that was Cy Hirsch's Military on Military. He points out about military resistance to our government's policies in terms of arming and equipping ISIS. He says that resistance dates back to the summer of 2013. It comes from Defense Intelligence Agency, Joint Chiefs of Staff, then uh, General Martin Dempsey, all talked about how the fall of the Assad regime would lead to chaos and potentially to serious takeover by jihadis. They say they had an all-source appraisal. That means that it was coming from signals intelligence, from satellite intelligence, from human intelligence, to pointing out that there was a covert U.S. program to arm and support the moderate rebels fighting Assad. It had been co-opted by Turkey. It had morphed into an across-the-board technical arms and logistical program for all of the opposition, including al-Nusra and the Islamic State, ISIS. The so-called moderates, he says, had evaporated, and the Free Syrian Army was nothing but a rump group stationed at an air base in Turkey. He said the assessment was bleak. There was no viable moderate opposition to Assad, and the U.S. was arming extremists. We've been telling you that for a long time. We'll be right back with Leanne McAdoo to analyze Saturday's Democrat debate. You guys have the exclusive for, which is a product called Deep Cleanse. And why I'm so excited about it is it's a unique formula, almost like the iodine crystals. We have two unique products that nobody in the world has. One of the most amazing ingredients in the world, and it's called Shilajit. And it's actually known as blood of the mountain or rock sweat because thousands of years ago, as a matter of fact, this ingredient was only given to the elite of the elite. Thousands of years ago, up in the Himalayan mountains and in Tibet. And we wanted to put this in stuff for, for a couple years, but we couldn't get an organic form. Right. I mean, so I, let's explain. I mean, we, this stuff's so good, we couldn't put it out for years. Right. So I had to actually, it's kind of like the iodine crystals, finding a source deep in the earth that we could get the cleanest source available. But in Tibet and in Nepal and in the Himalayan mountains, Thousands of years ago, they found, they watched these monkeys. And during the summer months, the monkeys would go up into the mountains. Now you're being racist against monkeys. And they would pick this black substance from the mountains. And so uh, in Russia, they actually, it, it, it grows in Russia in the mountains and in the Himalayas and only in the summer. And Chilajit is actually the decomposition of seven, up to 7,000 different medicinal herbs. So it decomposes, all these different herbs decompose in the Himalayan mountains and the volcanic soil up there. And what happens in the summertime... So it's almost like an oil up. from... Yes, it's high in fulvic acid, it's high in humic acid. Because they're, they're always claiming down. oil is really from decomposed animals and plants. There is some oil that is based from fossils, but most of it's really abiotic. But so, so this is a true fossil uh, source. I mean, explain it to me. It is. A, it's really the decomposition, like I said, of over seven thousand different medicinal herbs and plants. And it and with the rocks and the pressure deep in the mountains, it freezes and and during the summertime and the pressures build it up. It oozes out. It oozes out. So it literally oozes out of the mountain. It's like rock sap. It's like rock sap. It's black, and it's highly nutritious. Uh, even in the 1980s, when the Olympic athletes in Russia were accused of being on steroids, they found out that they were actually been given shalajit because it, it works as an anabolic as well. 
and it builds muscles. It's a big dose in there. The second big main ingredient in there is a volcanic zeolite concentrate. And this, what this formula is designed to do, the shilajit and the zeolites have a real strong negative charge. All the metals and chemicals and PCBs and VOCs have positive charges. So these go in, they grab it, and then they safely eliminate it through the body so you can become healthy. I mean, the, this is an amazing formula. I wish I actually had it, but because this was an exclusive InfoWars Life product, you're the only one in the world that has this formula now. And, uh, you know, there is going to be a limited supply available when you sell out because you can only harvest this once a year. How do people take it? How is it recommended that this be done? Just a daily, daily dose? Yeah, daily dose. Uh, the instructions are on the label. You know, of course, I, I kind of modify it for each individual. It depends on what your lifestyle is. I mean, the, honestly, the best thing to do is for you to avoid all these chemicals and toxins in your environment and try to identify them and start slowly reducing them. But personally, I, I'm going to probably take it every day, every other day, and I'll probably go with about a dropper full to maybe two dropper fulls. Uh, and I and I, li I don't expose myself to any chemicals. Infowarslife.com. Please also support our local AM and FM affiliates, support their local sponsors, or become a sponsor and spread the word. Because these aren't just great products. This is how we fund this independent operation. We're not taxpayer funded like MSNBC or NPR, and neither is your local station. So support them, folks. This is a war. <laughs> Joining me in studio now is Leanne McAdoo. We're going to talk about the Democrat debate. You may or may not have realized that there was one on Saturday. Of course, Leanne, it was by design yeah. the uh, very last Saturday before Christmas. And, of course, there were, uh, if you weren't out shopping, if you were watching uh, ball games, uh, you probably didn't know or care about this Democrat debate. That was by design. Mm -hmm. And, of course, there was an article that came out talking about, and it was linked on the Drudge Report, Hillary Clinton and the awful risk of winning ugly. That's what they're talking about in this article. And they're not talking about the way she dressed. <laughs> because I, I <laughs> tweeted this out with this outfit that she had when she came back because, you know, she took a bathroom break, and then she comes back, she throws her hands up in the air like, eh, so what? I was uh, over a minute late coming back from break, and I said, you know, she's got a bold new look, kind of moving away from that. Uh, pink polyester pantsuit look she had. This is kind of a, a cross between a burlap hijab and a Chairman Mao look, you know. But yeah. uh, it's really the arrogance that's there, okay? And it's really the arrogance in the way that uh, she's colluded with Debbie Wasserman Schill uh, in terms of, <laughs> of setting up the DNC right. as her own private organization. And this is something that I think could very easily fracture the Democrat Party. Bernie Sanders could and should run as a third party. He can run very comfortably with the Green Party. He's always uh, declared himself as an independent socialist. He ought to run as a third party. Right. Well, and that's what I suggested as well. But, you know, if you didn't tune into the Democratic debate, you really didn't miss much because it was more of the same. These debates are an opportunity for the candidates to show how they're different. But it's just it was a, another love fest where mm -hmm. they're all just agreeing mm -hmm. with each other and apologizing. And, oh, first, let me take this opportunity to say what a great first lady Clinton was and how she just re- redesign the whole role. and Bernie I mean, Sanders just totally laid down. I mean, things were, it looked like things were going to be really hot. Right. On Friday, his campaign manager got up. He was visibly shaking. He was so angry because they had shut down their access to the voter information. Right. And that was key for the Sanders campaign. They've gotten a record number of individual contributors, breaking Barack Obama's record number of individual right. contributors. But of course, all she really needs are a few Wall Street brokers, <laughs> a few uh, military industrial complex people to just wipe out all of that. And it doesn't really matter what they do in the primaries and the caucuses because she's got the DNC tied up with the superdelegates. Right. And this was a great opportunity for Sanders to point that out. Uh, but he really just kind of handed it over mm -hmm. to her. He apologized for that within the first yeah. 10 minutes. I mean, it's not as if they breached the wall. The firewall was down. Um, and so this hopefully is going to give voters kind of a peek behind the curtain there at the DNC mm -hmm. to see how they really are all in for Clinton. They've repeatedly ignored numerous um, controversies surrounding Hillary Clinton, but here with this, they made a huge deal of it, leaked some information to the press immediately. Exactly. So, as they point out in this article, they said, you know, this would not have happened without the approval of the Clinton surrogate, you know, and without the approval of of Hillary Clinton as well. And of course, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, or Schill, however you want to pronounce her last name. <laughs> uh, she used to be, she was a campaign manager for Clinton back in, in 2008. She's still her campaign manager, wow. but she's in charge of the DNC. And it was absolutely amazing to me to watch him just uh, 
roll over and 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 die as he did when those uh, Black Lives Matter people took over his his stage. I mean, he right. has a legitimate right to stand there and say, "Look, you you want a forum? I'm not cutting down on your freedom of speech, but I have set this time and place up. I have this uh, opportunity right. here to talk to people. Uh, do it somewhere else. You know, right. do it on your own time. But but that's the key, and that's what they're talking about here." If she wants to ram this down the, the sizable number of people who are supporting Bernie Sanders, if she wants to ram it down their throat, at the very least, they're not going to be enthusiastic Clinton voters. Right. Well, and she kind of, the DNC stepped away from that tactic because they saw that it was obviously riling up the base, but not in their favor. Mm -hmm. um, it was making yeah, the base Clinton energized look petty, in a different way. And yeah. it was pointing out that, you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz completely has ignored all of the controversy surrounding Clinton. So that was one of the big things. Uh, obviously, everyone went after Trump. Uh, O'Malley called him a fascist. And then Clinton goes after him, basically saying that Trump is becoming ISIS's best recruiter. Uh, she talks about how they're going to people showing videos of Donald Trump insulting Islam and Muslims in order to recruit more radical jihadists. Well, obviously, she makes this argument. It's fact-checked. It's There is no video that exists. But what does exist is an ISIS <laughs> recruitment video featuring Bill Clinton. <laughs> so, of course, Oops. this surface is right. This was a four minute video released last month entitled No Respite. And it includes an image of Bill Clinton and they call him a fornicator. And obviously that's in reference to his affair with Monica Lewinsky and others. <laughs> um, but they, it also features President Obama and former President George W. Bush. They're called liars and basically making fun of um, the high quality U.S. military that's ineffectual against Muslim countries. So she does this with Trump and it's actually her husband <laughs> that's well, being know, quite, used to recruit jihadists. Quite frankly, no matter what you say or do, there's nothing you could do to make, to recruit more people for ISIS than to indiscriminately bomb civilian exactly. meetings, weddings and funerals and so forth and so on. And pretend at the same time, tell everybody that you have this super high tech capability of pinpoint accuracy. What you're telling people then is you're doing it deliberately, and maybe they are, yeah. because we saw them deliberately target a Doctors Without Borders hospital in Afghanistan, attack it for 30 minutes, even though it was a well-known, well-publicized location. They had notified the Pentagon as well as the Afghan government numerous times. They continued that attack for 30 minutes. There's video of them shooting people running from the hospital, doctors and nurses and patients running from the hospital, targeting them with a machine gun fire. The same type of thing that we saw uh, leaked by Manning in mm. terms of, so this is a, an ongoing policy. That's what recruits people exactly. for ISIS. Exactly. And of course they're equipped by Hillary Clinton uh, through the Benghazi types of events. Right, well, and we know also too, International Business Times reported how uh, the Clinton Foundation and her State Department, they approved nearly double the amount of arms sales to those same 20 countries, more than double what President George W. Bush. And of course there's the weapons deal controversies there with her uh, State Department role, um, foreign donations from Saudi Arabia. So, I mean, she says that she's tough on guns. Meanwhile, she's approving all these billion-dollar arms deals. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, just a huge hypocrite. This is the most amazing thing is how they continue to to ignore the elephant in the room, mm -hmm. the most obvious thing in the room, just as Alex Jones just talked about in the last segment, uh, that Seymour Hersh is now pointing out that there's, there, there's this... Uh, internecine fighting going on within the military, within the intelligence communities, because they know what we've been reporting for a very long time, uh, that this is a deliberate arming and creation of these jihadi uh, surrogates. Mm -hmm. And that's something that CIA has been doing for a very long time, but it's never been more obvious. But everybody ignores it in the mainstream press. They ignore it in the debates. They, uh, whether it's Democrat or Republican, they ignore it. Right. And they can say one thing. And if you don't go after them and fact check them or do some additional research, you might just take them at their word. And so President Obama did a radio interview uh, talking about how Trump was, um, pe people were basically supporting Trump because they were, they didn't like the fact that there was a black president. You know, meanwhile, the, to make it racist. one of the top Republican candidates is a black man, Ben Carson. Mm -hmm. So obviously they're not, they don't have an issue with having another black president. Um, you know, but there, there's just other things as well. Yeah, the only reason that we would be concerned about people coming from a war-torn uh, area that's being controlled by radical jihadis, the only reason we would have a problem with it is because we're racist. Right. And of course, Islam is not a race. And also talking about how they're just wanting to exploit fears of blue-collar workers um, as well, and that's what's riling up Trump supporters when this omnibus bill that was largely Democrat 
Christmas present is what is truly threatening blue collar workers and what they really should be afraid of. And that's not a threat. It's something that is now signed in. It's going to almost quadruple the amount of aid.